Hello, and welcome to Mortals and Portals, a Pathfinder real play podcast. I am your host and GM, Zach, and joining me at the table is... Adam, and I play Jules and Azar Ketty Bard. I'm Ryan, I play Ryu, Tiefling Magus. I'm Taryn, and I play Waltz, a human champion. Nice, and Taryn is the only one who told the truth, because today we're doing Waltz's origin story. Adam and Ryan are going to be helping me out and playing some NPCs, and if you don't know what that what? means... That means non-player characters, so they're going to be helping oh. me out, populating the world with some random people, while we I focus know on Taryn playing Waltz. So this origin story takes place before episode one, so you're going to see some key events that took Waltz all the way up to Digsby's wagon and set him on the adventure you've been listening to so far. So does that sound good with everybody? You guys ready to do that? I I'm literally ready, can't wait. You better start I'll right now. It. I love okay, my turn. Yeah, I'm going to start right now. Like, that's, why we're, <laughs> that's why we're here. That's why I hit record. <laughs> you guys ready for my GM scene setting monologue? Do it. Do it. <laughs> All right. On the human homeworld of Mortifar, within the kingdom of Billarod, we find Waltz, precisely cutting a piece of venison in his father's butcher shop, Marlowe's Meats. It has been their busiest day in years, a promising sign that their hardships were finally behind them. As the daylight dwindles, they hurry to serve one final customer that has been patiently waiting in line since noon. All right, just let them know we got a couple cuts left of beef. Other than that, it's all pork for today. So you hear your brother call back to you. He goes, he just ordered a pound of venison. Yeah, tell him we don't got any more venison, all right? It's either beef or it's pork. That's all we got. Are you sure the GM already said you were cutting venison in his monologue? <laughs> yeah, all right. We got one more cut of venison, but after that, Tom, that's all. Great. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> all right, Walt, so you're cutting venison right now, man. You slide right through this meat. You get the perfect final cut of venison. Right. You wrap it up. We got one more of that. That was the, la- that yeah, was the last one. One more of that. That was the last one for the last customer. Do you need me to read the monologue again? I can do it. That's fine. <laughs> I'm Adam and I play Jewel. No, 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 no. Too far <laughs> back. Too far back. Too far back. <laughs> I was thinking so hard about like what I want to be cutting. You know what I mean? Yeah, I already I figured that, that out. I just for forgot to worry. listen, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. All right, yeah. So you wrap up this piece of venison, take it up front. You look across the counter and see a man that you recognize. He's an older looking man. He looks very worn down. You know him to be Telenor. Back in the day before the plague that has recently ran through your community, he had a farm and he was fairly wealthy, doing very well, very nice guy. But you know, during the plague, a lot of his livestock and cattle and all those things were wiped out. He lost everything. Um, He has since been homeless. And you see him standing there, looking very weak, standing on the other side of the counter. And your brother turns to you and he goes, oh, great. We had one more? Yeah, we got uh, we got this last one right here. Hey, uh, Telenor, how you doing? Oh, hello, Eld. Your name is Eld, by the way, for those of you that don't know, who are going to get a little oh, confused uh, when I say that. <laughs> I already am. Yeah. <laughs> Way ahead of you. <laughs> we are already. We have clearly confused already. Yeah, don't worry. I was it. born confused. <laughs> yes, good job. But nice try, Zach. Anyway, he says, "Hello, Eld. Busy day for you all. I see." Yeah, luckily things are uh, finally starting to pick up a little bit more around here. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, very hungry. You hear his stomach rumble. And then Thomas flips through some pages and he goes, one pound of meat, okay, that'll be 20 copper. And he goes, oh, all right. And he reaches into his cloak and pulls out a little pouch. And you see him one at a time pulling out some copper, counting it in front of you. Hey, uh, Telenor, I just, uh, hey, listen, you keep uh, you keep the money today. Uh, this one's on the house, all right? As he was pointed out, you can tell that he maybe had 10 copper on him. Mm-hmm. And he stops and he looks up and his eyes instantly start to water and he goes, oh, no, Eld, I, I, can, I can afford it. Uh, oh, no, 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 listen, we uh, we did uh, really well today and I know a lot of it was uh, in part to uh, you. I know my dad's really good friends with you and you've always helped us out a lot. Listen, we had a 
we had a good day today. It's good for the uh, the community, and you know, I want uh, I want you to have this. Oh, Elds, bless you. He sweeps it back into his pouch and ties it, and he reaches across the counter and puts his hand on his shoulder, and you can see his eyes watering. Bless you, boy. Bless you. You too, Thomas. And he goes, oh, yeah, no problem. He he picks up the pouch of meat, and he just holds it firmly in his hand, kind of shaking it back and forth, just smiling, struggling to think of the words that match the compassion you just showed him. He goes, bless you all. And he slides it into his cloak, and he goes, if there's anything you ever need, just let me know. Oh, you know I will. Hey, remember, low and slow, don't burn that thing. It burns pretty quickly, that venison. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, thank you, Eld. Thomas. And he turns around and starts walking back towards the market square. You can see the sun starting to go down, and you know it's time to close up shop. And Thomas looks to you and he goes, Hey, Walt, uh, that was really nice and all, but won't Dad check the register? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're going to we're gonna tell him as soon as we see him. He'll understand. Uh, one of the things that he actually taught me that I'm sure you'll learn pretty quickly, Thomas, is... Uh, Especially in our community here, there's nothing more valuable than a friend. So we know uh, Telenor's a good guy. If he had the money, he'd give it to us. But we got to take care of him. He's one of ours, you know? Right. <laughs> he smiles and just looks very proud of you. Just the way Thomas always looks at you is like you're the person he wants to grow up to be. And he gives you a nod and he goes, well, we better uh, clean up before dad gets on to us. Oh, yeah. Hey, and remember, uh, you're going to be big and strong one day, and I'm going to be old, so you're going to have to carry you're gonna have to carry me around to take care of me one day. <laughs> yeah, right. And he just starts picking up various change on the counter and getting all the coins in order and trying to wipe down the counter. And maybe you head towards the back to start staging the meats for tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. So you guys are cleaning up for a while. And then one of Thomas's friends runs up. He's an older kid. And he goes, hey, Thomas, uh, a couple of us are playing down the street. You want to come? And he goes, uh, I don't know, guys. I, I got to clean up. And he kind of looks to you, maybe hope in his eyes. Oh, yeah. Hey, Thomas, you go play. I can get the rest of this. <laughs> awesome. All right. And he uh, yells back, thanks, Eld. And he goes out the side and runs off with his friends. And they take off down an alley. Hey, uh, just remember to be back as the sun goes down, all right? Not when it's pitch black. All right, <laughs> you got it. And you can tell he's a little mischievous. He may not be back in time. <laughs> he takes off with his buddies. <laughs> you glance over. You see your dad sitting in the office. He's got his crutches up against the wall. He's going over inventory, um, clearly going over the numbers for the day while you continue to clean up. And then you hear the sound of marching and you recognize that as the familiar sound of soldiers marching down the street. Yeah, so Walt will just kind of hear those footsteps come and open the door to their shop and maybe just kind of throw the towel over his shoulder, lean on the uh, lean on the side of the door, and um, just kind of watch as they approach. Yeah, so they march by, and you recognize a lot of people in your age group, people you've known for a long time from your community that have gone off to join the military. And you know there's conflict brewing on the planet of Mortifar. There's an alliance forming led by the Kingdom of Eisenhelm, which is the most powerful kingdom in Mortifar. So with the plague and various tragedies and events going on around the planet, Eisenhelm is forming an alliance to take control of the planet's nodes so they can better regulate interplanetary travel and perhaps stop some of these threats before they occur. And that's certainly a cause you can support because a lot of people feel the plague originated from off-worlders, so you desperately wish you could join them in this fight. Yeah, so as I look at them approaching, I'll just kind of take a big breath in and sigh on the way out, kind of drop my shoulders and turn my head on the way back because, uh, yeah, it's something that Waltz has always kind of wanted was to join the military and make his you know community proud. So as you turn back inside, you see your dad standing in the doorway of his office, and he gives a chuckle. He goes, one of the busiest days we've had in years, isn't it, son? Yeah, uh, it was a good one. Uh, oh, hey, by the way, I wanted to uh, let you know, Telenor, uh, he was a little short on money, so uh, I gave him the last piece of venison. He gives you, like, almost waving you off as you say that, like, you don't even need to tell him. And he gives you a thumbs up, like, like he's proud of you. He goes, you, uh, you, you talked to him recently? Is he, uh, is he doing okay? He's in surprisingly good spirits. 
he mentioned he's looking to join the military, maybe get some pay, get out of here. Tried to talk him out of it, of course, but what can you do? Speaking of which, you eyeing the soldiers there, son? Yeah, you hear about the new mission they're doing to uh, try and regulate the nodes, maybe uh, limit how many um, invaders we have. Maybe, you know, if we had done that years ago, maybe we wouldn't have uh, had had that plague, you know? He nods and he goes, of course I've heard about it. Why don't you uh, take a break from your work here and come hang out for a second? And he turns around and heads back into his office. I'll just uh, follow him. Uh, You walk in there, so you see all of his papers spread out. You see him on his crutches go up to one of his cupboards and open them, and he reaches in and pulls out a bottle of whiskey. He goes, I don't care much for gold plane, but they sure know how to make a nice bottle of whiskey. And he takes the cap off, and he pours two glasses, sets it on the counter, puts the lid back on, picks up the cups and sets them on the desk. Sits down and puts his crutches up against the wall. You sure uh, you sure I can have a glass of this? This is the good stuff. Well, it was a good day, son. And I'm proud of you. You've worked hard around here. And you've gotten us through some tough times. Well, uh, you taught me well, Pop. And I'll pick up the glass of uh, whiskey and reach to cheers him. He clanks it to your glass and you both take a sip. Roll me a fortitude save. Ooh, yes. yes. Just so we can roll, you know. Uh, Twelve. All right, so your dad takes a sip, wipes his mustache. He had absolutely no reaction, but you take a nice. drink and do a little bit of a cough, but are able to suppress it a bit. Look tough in front of your dad. He gives you an assuring nod. That's what we all want. <laughs> an assuring nod from our dads. While oh, it's to, look, <laughs> to look tough in front of our dads. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Uh, uh, unrelated, kinda. could you all give me an assuring nod real quick? <laughs> yes. <laughs> unrelated. For our <laughs> listeners, we've all just given Adam an assuring nod. Thank you. You must have felt good. I'm going to pretend those nods were for me, too. You guys should have made a character where you have to, at some point, have an assuring <laughs> father, which is what Zach's doing. For <laughs> Somehow in Walt's origin oh, story, we like shoehorn oh, all of them yeah. getting approval from wait, wait, their wait. dads. Quickly. Is it too late to start over? Uh, back on track. <laughs> and he goes, so this, uh, this military stuff, that's still something you want to do? Yeah, I'd say so, Dad. Uh, you know... I want to be a part of something bigger. I'm I'm happy with everything that we've done here, but uh, you know, I can only do so much here for this community and you know, I think I could really go do some good out there and also just, you know, after all your stories and everything that you've done, dad, I want to be like you and you know, I've always kind of wanted to be like you, Pops. So the whole time you're talking, you could tell he was listening very intently, nodding. Your dad's always been a good listener and he chuckles and you say like him and he goes, <laughs> Like me. And he looks off, kind of stares at the floor for a bit, takes another drink. He goes, I'll take another drink too. He goes, You know, when Sindor seized Aragod and turned his gaze towards Helen, I was filled with the same courage that stirs within you now. I was eager to protect you, Thomas, and your mother. So I joined the fight, marched north. We thought nothing but glory awaited us in those woods. But nothing is ever that simple, Eld. The druid unleashed every foul beast he had enslaved. Creatures I never even knew existed until I watched them rip my friends to shreds. He pauses, his eyes kind of glass over. Though monsters are one thing, at least you can fight those. But Sindor was truly wicked and had infested the forest with toxic spores. Even the most skilled warriors were no match for their fumes melting them from within and he's given like a thousand yard stare just you can tell he is right there in those moments Mm -hmm. if he managed to survive that we're still an army of honorless degenerates ready to kill you simply for the pleasure it took us a year to drive that madman to isberg didn't even manage to kill him and you see him clench his fist and grit his teeth and stare you can feel the tension in the air maybe like you want to interrupt him but you know now's not the time okay i missed the birth of your brother And he fidgets with his wedding ring on his hand. Time with Ella. We came home to the plague. Probably brought it with us. Nothing truly good came out of those woods. And he stares for a while longer. And then he looks at you and he says, I tell you this to say, there's nothing glamorous about war. You'll give pieces of yourself you'll never get back. You understand what I'm saying, Eld? Yeah, I I think I understand, Pop. But uh, yeah, you may have missed out on the birth of Tomas and you may have missed out on a lot of time with the 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's how uh, I say it. Uh, if the GM says it differently, I mean, that's probably just a phonetic error, you know? Right, right, yeah. That makes sense. Domas. Uh, but what was I saying? Yeah, hey, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you missed out on the birth of uh, Tomas and a lot of time with, uh, you know, my mother and everything, but... Who knows, Dad? Maybe because of you, I still have a younger brother, and I was able to have a mother. So if you and all your uh, comrades didn't do that, Pops, uh, maybe none of us would be here. He lets out a big sigh, and he nods. You can tell that what you just said actually kind of meant a lot to him. And he looks at you, and he says, You've honored me, old. We never would have made it through the fade without you. Tomas, the shop. (laughs) Thank you, son. I think... We'll finally be able to afford some hired help around here. And uh, maybe you can join the military after all, if you still want to go. Uh, you're not you're not serious, are you, uh, are you, Pops? I mean, I don't want to leave you guys high and dry over here. No, we'll be fine. Tomas, he's picking up on things. We're turning a profit. We can, we can hire some help, thanks to you. Uh, Pops, I won't let you down. I'll, uh, yeah, thank you. I've, you. You know this is really important to me, and, you know, the fact that I finally have your blessing... Uh, Means a lot, Pops. There is one caveat, though. What's that? You come home, all right? Uh, listen, Pops, I mean, if uh, you went through that whole war and it took uh, all that and then a plague to take one of your limbs, I'm sure I'll come back just fine. <laughs> and so it is. I love you, son. And he raises his glass to give you a cheers. I love you too, Pops, and I'll clank it. Your glasses clank. And with that, we'll jump to six months later, halfway around the world. The kingdom of Billarod battles the goblinoids of Desilus on the island of Mandaru. The island's name means many doors, a fitting title as it contains more nodes than any one place in all Keldora. Billarod has been tasked with seizing control of Mandaru's nodes from the Desilonians on behalf of Eisenhelm, the most powerful kingdom on Mortifar. Billarod has successfully captured their first node, and are attempting to thwart a goblinoid counterattack in the southern marshes. It is here we find Waltz amidst the Billarod army. So, Waltz, the sun is setting over the battlefield, spilling an orange light that glistens off the armor of fallen soldiers. The sounds of metal clashing cuts through the constant rumble of screams. It is clear Billarod is nearing victory, as the enemy forces dwindle rapidly. You feel fortunate to have survived your first battle, though you soon notice a nearby orc riddled with arrows and gashes decimating your comrades. What do you do? I'm going to uh, look around. I'm going to look around quickly uh, for a spear, something that I could throw. Right. Roll me a perception check. 23. Awesome. So you're almost shell-shocked for a moment at just all the carnage you're witnessing, but you see that this orc is tearing through your comrades and you need to stop him. You look around and you see a spear stabbed into a goblin nearby that you could pull out and use. Uh, yeah, I'll immediately reach that with one arm and just rip it out. Awesome, you have the spear. Awesome. Then I'm going to... It is awesome. <laughs> move. <laughs> so awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. You guys can't see it right now, but it is awesome. I'm going to so. get a running start and use my movement to sprint and orient my body um, horizontally, kind of reach out one arm, and I'm going to throw it at that orc then. Great. Roll it. Ooh, seven. Awesome. So this... <laughs> awesome again. <laughs> That's the word Not of the episode. Awesome. Oh, Fantastic. Uh, the name um, of the episode. So you prepare to throw the spear as you're running up. You see this orc slash through one of your comrades, cutting him in two. He turns to the one remaining one and picks him up by the throat and slams him into the ground. And you hear his bones crunch. And he turns right as you throw the spear. And he simply sidesteps it. And it stabs into the ground nearby. And he lets out a loud roar and starts charging towards you. He's foaming at the mouth. There's blood all over him. There's eight, ten arrows in his back, and he's still going, and he's coming straight for you. I'm going to sprint directly towards him. All right, tough guy, you and me. It's your turn. Uh, so he used all of his movement to sprint towards you. Okay, I'm going to finish, uh, if I have to use any movement, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to immediately take out my sword and attack him with my long sword. What? You got it. Mm-hmm. Waltz uses swords or Eld? Did not see that coming. That's what Origins are Eld and Waltz are two different people. That's why. (laughs) He looks to his feet and there's a bag of apples. (laughs) 
I got an 18. That hits. Um, 10 damage. Great. So you... <laughs> not awesome. So you swing your sword and slash across this orc's chest. Green blood rains down. It looks down at the gash, looks back up, and it's trembling with rage. And you can tell he still has plenty of fight left in him. Oh, and then I'll I'll raise my shield for my last action. You're going to need it. So you see his veins bulging in his muscles as he's filled with just intense energy. And he is going to ferociously swing his fist at you. Does a 21 hit you? Yeah, it does. It sure does. So you notice he has a metal gauntlet on, on this hand that he's punching you with. And he clocks you across the face for seven damage. Oh, that's going to leave a mark. (laughs) And then he trudges back up, raises his machete-like sword above his head. He goes to swing downward. Does a 14 hit you? No. So you lift your shield up and it clanks off your shield. And he is then going to try and sweep his leg and trip you. And definitely misses. So you athletically jump over his sweeping leg and land back in front of him, and he roars back at you. I'll uh, kind of swallow and try not to look too intimidated, but uh, maybe definitely taken back by how uh, strong this thing is. Um, and then I'll go to attack him again with my long sword. Roll it. 24. That hits. Nice. Good job. Thank you. Awesome. I'm working really hard. Dude, max damage too. 12, 12 damage. Awesome. Awesome again. <laughs> I'm learning so much about yeah. myself today. I love the word awesome. <laughs> kind of, though. You it know, is it's awesome, kinda awesome. Kind of awesome. So, Waltz, you keep your shield raised almost to hide your sword swing and then pull it down to the side and release an upward slash that cuts deep across his stomach and blood falls just pouring to the floor. And the orc drops to one knee, and you hear him panting. And he goes, I fled one tyrant into the hands of another. And he stands up with this renewed vigor. You can see blood just raining out of him. Whatever energy has occupied him is clearly not sustainable as he charges back at you. What do you do? I'll, uh, yeah, I'll just unleash one final swing across his body if I can. Roll it up. 15. That hits. So nice. he charges toward you, running with his sword raised above his head. Roll damage. Six damage. And he runs straight into your sword as you thrust forward into his stomach. His momentum carries him all the way towards your face, and his heavy, orcish breath is just panting on you and his eyes start to gloss over and he says at least I died free and you pull the sword out and he falls on his knees topples over dead I'll just uh, look to the ground for a little bit and um, completely let my guard down maybe uh, just kind of pondering what he said and being really confused Um, so I'll still have my sword and my shield in my hands but just drop them, lower my shoulders, lower my guard, and just kind of look down for a second, ponder what he may have meant by that. And then your focus is brought back as the familiar sounds of a Billarod trumpet signaling victory plays in the distance, and you look back around the battlefield and see the orcs, hobgoblins, goblins fleeing the marshes into the tree line as they're being driven off the battlefield. And... You turn back towards the trumpet, and you see the familiar sight of your commander, Lieutenant Werewig, atop his horse. He is in pristine, gleaming armor. You can tell very clearly that he never rode down into the battlefield. And to his right is his squire, Kestian, standing beside him as well, very proudly holding the flag with a smug look on his face, also with pristine armor. And your friends walk up to you. So one is your buddy Stanhope, played by me. He has loose, flowing hair. He's an older man, but has a very young spirit. You knew he was a street performer back in 
Bill the Rod, he used to juggle for money, didn't care much about anything else. He walks up with his bow, lowers it, and then also walking up would be Ryan's character. Ryan, who is your NPC today? Hello, my name is Honk. I am a goose character. Uh, I was born a goose, and I've been a goose. No, you're not a goose. Then. You're not a goose. <laughs> so, you're not a goose. <laughs> you should have texted me if you're going to try and play goose. What? <laughs> not That's something you run by Zach first. <laughs> run it, run it back. So I walk up to Waltz and I say, Honk, <laughs> as not a goose. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Right, this, I just found a new best oh, friend. Ryan, I promise we'll find a way <laughs> oh to put gosh. a goose character into the story. We'll, we'll do it for you, bud. <laughs> oh, Thank you. Man. All right, I guess for now I'll be Pemdaz, um, Waltz's oldest and best of Did you just say Pemdaz, friends. like the algebra, like, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, like order of it's operations? Spelled way differently. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> it's like, why are you making an algebra joke right now? <laughs> Wouldn't attract with me. I just color pictures. <laughs> Wow, wh- wh- Waltz, th- that was so cool what you did back there. Uh, calm down now, Pemdos, says Stanhope. And walking up is Adam's character. Adam, describe your character. Uh, my character's name is Killian McFillian. And <laughs> Great. <laughs> Wonderful. He's a, uh, also not GM last name, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Daz He's is a- my last name and Pem is my first name. <laughs> oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> yes, Killian McFillian. He's a tall, uh, uh, slender... Blonde, uh, fairly attractive. Gotta be man. attractive, yeah. You gotta be, yeah. It's the only time I can be, you know? We'll say Stan Hope's <laughs> ugly, just because none of us ever make ugly characters. Stan Hope's yeah, kind of no, ugly. No, Stan Hope's a good looking dude. Oh, he's like, uh, he's kind of like a John, John Snow type look, you know? Ooh, okay. Ooh, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Cool, okay. Yeah. So yeah, Killian, Killian McFillian walks up. Good to talk, boys. Hey, uh, Philly Das, how you doing? Wonderful. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm pretty good. I was I was pretty scared during that fight, but uh, watching you just it was so inspiring. How uh, did you fare? You did an excellent job there. Oh yeah, I uh, you know, luckily the training paid off. You know, hey, here's a question I got for you guys. How is it that no matter how many battles we fight, it seems that those two's armor just gets shinier and shinier? Oh and yes. And I'll point up to the two officers, or the they officer and the, uh, Kestian. They look up to the hill, and Stan Ope says. Yes, I don't think they've ridden in a battle a single time. Well, y- you know, Waltz, uh, the 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 commander he doesn't he doesn't have to fight because he's just in charge of so much other stuff, you know. Yeah, I'm sure he's always got his hands full. He seems uh super busy up there, doesn't he? Always convenient that it's during the time that we're fighting. Someone's got to <laughs> sit on that horse. <laughs> <laughs> Stanhope, <laughs> good one, Stanhope. <laughs> that thank was you. a good one indeed. <laughs> yes, thank you. You're always the funny one of the group. <laughs> you are you're so, so full of jokes. Oh, I would you like it. to watch me juggle? <laughs> he just starts juggling in front of you. Pretty <laughs> cool. Oh, right? I start clapping for him. Hey, this Stan is my favorite Hope, one. Stanhope, what happy times we have! Hey, right Stanhope, do the do the spin, do the spin oh, with yes, the juggling yes. and the spin. And he, he kicks one off his foot while spinning, and then he has it land on his head, and then he does a little Whoa. bow, Whoa. and then throws it back up there. That's fantastic! That's done. Hope that That's done. fantastic. So, uh, absolutely fantastic. And then the squire Kestian runs up. What are you guys doing, juggling? Come on, you got to get around and make sure none of these orcs are still alive. You know, come on, what are you doing, Stanhope? Oh, yes. Sorry, Kestian. You are the squire, after all. <laughs> he nudges you guys with his elbow. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll walk up to him and hand him a dagger. Uh, here, Kestian, why don't you uh, get your hands dirty? I have to carry out Lieutenant Werewig's wishes and make sure you guys are doing what you're supposed to do, not juggling. Big deal. You won one battle. How many battles have you won? <laughs> the Billarod army has won many battles here in Mandaru. And you're a part of that army? Yes, who do you think was navigating all the strategy and everything? Y- you know what, I don't have to explain myself to you guys. Grab a spear, uh, make sure none of these guys are still alive. And he whips his cape around and starts wandering off and yelling at somebody else in the distance. I flip him off as he goes away. <laughs> I pull Waltz to the side. Hey, Waltz, uh, I, I I just wanted to share something with you really quick. Yeah, what is it, uh, Das? Um, I, I didn't kill a single, I didn't kill a single enemy that whole time. I was... I was too scared. I was just watching you. I don't think I can. I don't think I can find a one that's still alive and stab him. Hey, uh, honestly, I didn't plan on doing that either. Uh, we'll just kind of walk around and look look busy, you know. We'll we'll just pretend to be doing that. Okay, and I like scratch the back of my head. Don't tell the other guys, though, right? 
Oh no! I've listen. been standing right next to you. Oh, like, Killian! <laughs> oh, so, oh, I was just telling what's about all the guys that I killed. Listen, <laughs> it's all right. Don't worry about it. Oh, I pee my pants. I'll be honest. <laughs> I tried very hard to kill that orc, but uh, put eight, eight arrows or so in his back. Luckily, Waltz was able to finish him off once again. Good you shot all those arrows. Oh done. yeah. I mean, the important thing is is that the battle's won. I mean, we don't need to go around and do any unnecessary killing. That's not the uh, the point of this. Right, you are Waltz. So you all saunter about the battlefield, taking Waltz's lead, not necessarily stabbing any downed orcs you find, helping any comrades you see, maybe doing your best to look busy. And then you hear the trumpet sound saying you must fall back into formation as you're going to march back to camp. All right, boys, looks like it's uh, time to go. Let's go get some food. Eh? I'm sure there's going to be a... Uh... There's going to be some good food after this. We want a pretty big battle here. They're going to be thankful. Uh, that sounds right. wonderful. I'm so yeah. hungry. After all that killing you did. <laughs> hey, I kid, I kid. It's okay. Not killing anybody. It's right? okay. I just, I kid. I, 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 oh. Hey, it's all right. I'll remember, give him a big old side hook. Uh, remember, knowing when not to kill is honestly more important than knowing when to kill. Waltz, you're so wise. I smile so wide at Waltz. Makes me feel so good about myself. I'll pat him on the back and, uh, you know, kind of gesture him to walk towards the sound of the trumpet so we can go get some food. Oh, man, what do you think they have for us? You think they got some big old pieces of pork, maybe some big, fat, long strips of beef? Oh, I'm so hungry. Well, oh, after yeah. a battle like that, I'd hope they have something for us. You're making me oh, hungry yeah. with all that talk. Hmm. You remember the uh, salt- salted pork that they had at the end of uh, Loster Fest, the... Uh, the festival that just <laughs> happened. It's a it's a big uh it's a big festival holiday. It's a real yeah, thing. Yeah, how could I world. forget about <laughs> Lobster Fest? What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> With all the pork. I selected pretty much <laughs> a word that sounds exactly like lobster, but without the B. I think mean, it's just Lobster Fest. Yeah, Lobster Fest had the best pork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all got a red lobster. <laughs> Great. <laughs> all right, so you all fall into formation. Uh, dreaming of lobster fest, apparently. <laughs> and march your way back to camp, following Lieutenant Werewig, who is sitting proudly atop his horse. His armor is immaculate, uh, riding alongside him on a less magnificent-looking horse with less magnificent-looking armor is, of course, Kestian. So you guys make your way into camp. So you pass some palisade walls that are being set up sort of a temporary base of operations just to hold the position you captured. You know that this camp is built around the node that was recently claimed by Billarod forces. And as you cross the threshold of the palisade walls, you see them building further palisade walls around the node itself to further protect it. And this node looks like a circular stone platform on the center of the ground. You can't make out much detail from where you're at. You haven't really been granted permission to get too close of it. None of you have interacted or traveled on nodes before. You're all from Mortifar, so you maybe look curiously at it. Can you imagine what it would be like to leave this place? Go somewhere else? Oh, no, I, I think I'd be too scared to go anywhere else. <laughs> What's better than here with our best buds? And he's juggling again. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> I'm glad you like it. It is hard to argue that. Uh, Waltz, if you could go anywhere, where would you go? Oh, uh, someplace with a lot of water, for sure, you know? A real nice, uh, maybe a nice beach. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a planet out there that's just full of really nice beaches and sea. Well, goals, that's you know? Aquaria, Waltz. Surely you know that. Yeah, but, uh, uh, you think this node goes there? You think it could take us there? Oh, I don't know. I'm not an astronomer. Yeah, me neither. Well, I can tell you the one place I definitely wouldn't want to go, and that's Desolus. Those goblins, they're something else. They seem to have oh, come yeah. to us. Yeah, no, and that place sounds pretty hot. Uh, maybe a little too hot for my liking. Not enough water, you know. You need to balance. Like, toasty, but you got water there. So, also, Waltz, as you guys are talking, you notice something that makes you do a double take as you're passing the officer's tent. You could swear that you just saw your father, Marlo, amidst the crowd hanging out by the entrance of one of the officer's tents. Uh, that'll catch my attention. I'll just be like, uh, uh, guys, I'll be, uh, I'll be right back, and I'll immediately go check it out. 
We'll save you a spot, Waltz. So you start making your way through a crowd of people, breaking formation. You hear Kestian yell, hey, Waltz, fall back in line. And as you're cutting through people, someone walks past you, and then it seems like your dad just disappeared in an instant. Can you roll me a perception check? Yeah, I can do that. I can do anything. With a plus two circumstance bonus. Non-nat 20. You instead start peering into the officer tent, and you see Lieutenant Werewig walking in. He is being congratulated by other officers in immaculate armor, and you see there is a long table in their tent just filled with high-quality meats, fruits, all the drink they could want, desserts. It's just stacked with immaculate-looking food. You can smell the aroma coming out of the tent, and it stirs an intense hunger within you. I'll, I'll just look around confused and search for my dad a little bit longer. And, you know, I could have swore I saw him and just kind of um, try and think what it could have been or who it could have been because, you know, it doesn't really make any sense. And then after that, um, you know, I'll kind of come back to and realize I must have just been seeing things. And so, uh, yeah, I'll rush back to them and I'll be like, boys, there's a, there's a big feast waiting for us. You guys are going to love this. So there was a salted pork, there was the beef. Uh, they had the they had the cherry grapes, you know the the grapes. Stanhope are, drops but, what he's juggling and he's just drooling at the mouth. <laughs> I love oh, those. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you do, you do love those. I was that's what I thought when I saw those. I said uh, Philly loves those things. You saw the food already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it was in the officer. They, you know, it's got to be coming. It's got to be coming. We're about to eat good tonight, boys. Oh, this I is awesome. Wait. Let's <laughs> celebrate with another round of juggling, Stanhope. <laughs> Do it. Uh, I dropped Do my it balls in the, in the formation. You'll have to get them. The people are stepping on them. Hey, we'll look out for no, my no, balls. Guys, we gotta, let's go get the food. Guys, come on. It's it's oh. It's got to be right around here. Let's I go. I suppose I could juggle anything. It doesn't matter. Turns around. <laughs> yeah, take my knife. No. That, oh, okay. <laughs> my toupee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're bald. I didn't. I had no idea. You you're guys so didn't young. know that? That's unfortunate. Oh, yeah. It's, this moment, no? it's an incredibly significant piece of my backstory. I don't think we'll ever get to your backstory, but it's good to know. It's my family's shame. <laughs> All right. So you guys march back towards your tent. And you... <laughs> Did we all need a moment to just digest okay. the okay. fact that Ryan made his character have a toupee in his backstory? <laughs> Right, the whole good. time, Walt is just slowly nodding like his, his head. Like, yeah, this all, this is all okay. Knew this the whole time. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you all march back towards your tent, and you see the lineup, the the table with all these pots on it. You see the familiar sight of your chef, Bester. He is a stout, plump man with buzz cut and no facial hair and he's sitting there stirring his pot vesta how's that beard coming along very funny you guys know i can't grow a beard i jest <laughs> hey don't <laughs> let him get so to you cool. what uh what uh no hey vesta you look great you've always looked great uh hey vesta Thanks, where's the uh where's the where's the food at where's uh i saw yeah, the vesta, meat. i saw the food oh, there's got to be more than I, this no i make it it's right here look he tilts the pot, and you see the familiar sight of what you all call scrap stew. In fact, you even mockingly call it crap stew. Hey, Vester, there's no way we're eating scrap tonight. I just saw a whole bunch of food in the officer's tent. Why Where do you is guys it? always call it scrap? I work really hard on this. Uh, Vester, I mean, you try your best, but they got really good meats up there. How'd the officers get that? Where's, where's ours? They do? Man, they yeah, never I... let me work with the good ingredients. Uh, there's got to be some. I'll, don't worry, boys. I'll go figure this out. You just hold on, and I'm gonna leave and kind of go uh, outside of the tent and look around. As you start walking away, you see everyone that had overheard that there's supposed to be a feast. They heard you talking to your friends. They all, all their shoulders sink. Like morale is crushed as you work your way through the crowd. Hey, don't worry, guys. I know Waltz will take care of this. Okay, trust him. What do you mean he's gonna yeah, like he's cook the best. for you? Like what? No, Vester, he's, he's, we're supposed to have a feast and, and I think he's going to go get it. So hold on to your scrap for now. I mean, your, um, <laughs> your, uh, uh, uh soup. <laughs> I know you guys call it crap stew. <laughs> I don't, I don't cuss. <laughs> we don't blame you, Vesta. Hey, what's up with your hair? It's like on sideways. 
uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I quickly fix it. <laughs> the concept of like going to battle, but like wanting your hair to look good. <laughs> yeah, it still looks terrible. A toupee like, under a there's helmet. There's no way a toupee would stay on in a battle, dude. <laughs> Why did you include this? I love it. All right, Waltz, what are you doing? All right, I'm going to look outside and uh, kind of work my way back to the officer's tent and look around. Um, so I guess I'll do a perception check if I can. Do it. No, it's against the rules. <laughs> 21. Non nat 21. Yeah, so you're looking around and you once again confirm you can see a feast going on inside the officer tent. They're just having a blast. You can tell they've already drank a lot. They're in very high spirits. You can hear a lot of commotion coming out of there. And then your shoulder gets bumped as someone is coming by with a cart of more food. Do I recognize who's got the cart? Yeah, you recognize him as someone who went to training with you, but hasn't performed very well. So he's kind of just been demoted to being an assistant around camp. And his name is Desmond. He has dark hair, um, also buzzed close, and he has big, thick eyebrows and a large nose. You said Desmond? Mm Mm-hmm. All right. Um, yeah, I'll look at the cart and I want to see, is it like the same food or what do I? What am I looking at? You can't really see. It's got lids on all of the platters, but you can smell a, f- a familiar smell. Okay, I'll uh, quickly bump into him and maybe intentionally try and knock one of those off and, and just kind of catch it so I can inspect it a little bit more and see what's inside. <laughs> Roll a thievery check. Nice. I'm just going to throw it on the ground. <laughs> That Uh-oh. one. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Awesome. Uh, yeah. You're trying to play it off very casually, and you just scoot like three platters worth like onto the ground, and they kind of fall into the mud. He goes, Waltz, what the heck? What are you doing? Oh, uh, Desmond, uh, I didn't see you there. Uh, How? But- I'm pushing oh. a huge cart. Oh. <laughs> So sick of this. <laughs> Sucks being an assistant around here. <laughs> hey, don't worry, and I'll uh, pick up all the meats off the ground and put them. Yeah, all obviously on you should do that. You knocked it over. Gosh. Yeah. Hey, listen here. Uh, what? Oh, Desmond, you're you're uh, you're a devious guy, aren't you, Desmond? What? What are you talking about, Waltz? You're gonna you're gonna feed this meat that's obviously gone bad to those officers. The one that you threw in the mud? No. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, so no. Look trouble. at look at this. What? Look at this, and I'll open it up. Uh, look at you. See how that's still uh, a little pink? You see those little specks there? That's mold. This what? is bad. This is bad stuff. I didn't know mold was. Yeah. Bad. What? Ugh, yeah. No. It's, uh, it's a weird. It's a weird kind of mold. Uh, it's a kind that only evolves around here, and instead of growing on the outside, it actually grows on the inside of meats. Excellent. Um, Roll that with a plus two status bonus because he knows that you're a butcher and know a lot about meat. Mm-hmm. 10. Mm. I don't know, Waltz. I've never heard of pink mold. Are you sure? Yeah, uh, you know, I was actually from uh, Sindor a long time ago. My dad actually used to be in the army, and he said that there was all these spores that started doing some really terrible things. And one thing was uh, it evolved how mold grows around here. And instead of it growing on the outside, it grows on the inside and kind of eats from within. I figured you knew this. That's why you're feeding this thing. I mean, you're going to kill all these officers, oh, which, listen, whoa. I mean, if you're that, yeah, you're kind whoa, of a, hey, you're, you're a crazy guy. I don't like them either. I don't think they deserve to die, but that's probably what you're going to do here. Uh, I didn't know Sindor made any kind of, like, new molds for meats. I, it was freshly cooked. I, look, are you serious? I know listen, you used to Listen, you don't got to convince me. You don't got to convince me. Listen, if this is your plan, I'm not going to get in your way. I understand they're not the nicest to us either. Uh, Hey, you can consider my lips sealed. Ugh, man. They're, you're going to get in a lot of him. trouble, though. Gosh. Yeah, you'll, they'll definitely <laughs> find out that it was you because you're carrying this cart. So uh, you better flee if you're going to do that. Listen, what, what, what if I, I do, do with this? It? What, if I, what if I just take it off your hand? I'll, I'll get rid of it for you. We got to throw all this stuff away. Well, actually, I'd really appreciate that because now I got to go get a whole other cart of meat and I don't have time to deal with this. All right, but make sure you look on the inside. I'll kind of... Um, Get like my muddy fingers on the inside of the meat real quick, and, and make sure it dude, doesn't have any of dude, this. Dude, what are you doing? Ah, just never mind. Just you know, make sure you taste that a little bit. A little bit won't kill you, but if you eat the whole thing, I'm not going to eat it, man. You just told me no. If you, know you eat a little you know bit, you'll be able to, to do with this. It. You got it, okay? You got it. I'm out of here. All right, listen, listen. I'll I'll do my best, but uh, you know, you really owe me one here. 
Okay, look, thanks, I guess. It sucks, I hate being in the army. He just turns around and <laughs> runs off. <laughs> Gotta go get another cart now. I'm going to take that cart. Uh, I'm going to sneak it maybe around the back to um, the back side of our tent. Use whatever concealment is around me to kind of uh, hide that I'm taking this. All right. Roll a stealth check. Okay. <laughs> Non-nat one. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, hey, non -nat one. the dice. <laughs> yeah, I got two minus one stealth. <laughs> Somebody gift Tara new dice. I'm either rolling really good or just really bad, but I'll take it. It's supposed to be your episode, dude. <laughs> So you're rolling the cart, and you go past Vester's table, and he goes, hey, Waltz, what are you doing? What? I got food. You don't need to do that. Hey, yeah, Vester, this is, uh, this is what I was talking about. Because we won this big battle, the officer said that we should have all this. There's like no hey, but way you know what, they, uh, there's like no way they said that. Oh, yeah, Vester, and you know what they said? They said uh, that you should have first pick because of how hard you always work to make us food. So here, uh, this is... Uh, this is a plate of uh, some food that I accidentally dropped on the ground, but it was three plates worth, and I put it all into one. So, yeah, it's kind of dirty, but there's three times as much, and it's all for you. He starts, like, panting, breathing heavily out of his mouth, like, oh, that looks good. Yeah, oh, I'll take yeah. that. Hey. I could put it in my stew. It's just got a little bit of mud on it. Yeah, just a, and a little bit of mud as, uh, you know, uh, that, those natural anti-inflammatories that are really good for you. Hey, uh, Philly, I got, uh, you got those cherries for you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Walt. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Das, I got this uh, this rye. This is a really good bread, but you know what's, uh, what's the best part about it? What's that? This uh, this bread is known to give people courage. What? No way. <laughs> You're just yeah, messing try with it. Walls. And try hair, it. Take a bite. I heard. <laughs> oh, okay. I gobble it up. <laughs> Stanhope puts his hand on your shoulder, and he looks at you, and you can tell he knows you're not supposed to have this. And he goes, perhaps we should put this in the tent, fellas. Yeah, let's bring it in. Hey, don't let anybody see it. I snuck it over here without anybody noticing. Yeah, and you look over, and Vester's just throwing this, like, muddy meat into his stew, and he looks very excited. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you push the cart into the tent. All of the soldiers in the tent stand up. They're all murmuring and fighting to get to this cart that you're pushing in. Oh, what did you get, Waltz? What, what is this? Oh, hey, Gre hey, listen, hey, hey, make sure everybody gets a little bit... Uh, but don't cause too much ruckus. Let's make sure we can eat this before we get in any trouble, all right? This bread is amazing! <laughs> We've created a monster. <laughs> hey, and how do you feel? You feel brave, don't you? Yeah, I think I might even look a little bit stronger. Ha how's, oh, my, how's my hair? Yeah, your, your chest is huge. Never looks strong. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, you look over and stand up as juggling some rolls. Look, I'm juggling rolls <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. Woo, Stanhope! Stanhope, you're the you're the just best juggler I've ever seen in my entire life. You amaze me every single time. I just don't understand it. It's incredible. It's actually not that hard. He just keeps juggling. He adds more things into the mix. <laughs> Man, what can't this guy do? This guy's amazing. Well, it's really though. This is all thanks to you. Yes, I'll uh, I'll grab a drink and I'll get up on the table. Comrades, raise your glasses to the founder of the feast, Vaults. Waltz, yeah, it gives us Waltz. courage. They all raise I guess their I glasses. Have one drink tonight. Two volts. Two, Two volts. Everyone cheers as they knock back their drinks and start devouring this food. And everyone is just vibrant with energy, enthusiasm. You can tell they're so grateful. They're all putting their hands on your shoulder, Waltz, saying thank you. And you have never seen them look happier. Hey, listen, and one more cheers for all of you, because without you guys fighting hard out there, we wouldn't have this feast. So one more cheers to you fellas. Woo! Yeah, Waltz! <laughs> We're all friends. Yeah. And we all Man, have this hair. this stuff is good. <laughs> I don't know why I chose to be gluten intolerant for so long. <laughs> <laughs> um, Waltz, as you say that last year, you turn around and see Kestian standing in the doorway of the tent with a bitter expression on his face, and he whips around, his cape turns, and he darts off to the distance. Uh-oh, that's not good. What's up, Waltz? <laughs> oh, nothing. Uh, hurry up, uh, eat your food. This, this stuff's starting to go cold. Quick, eat as much as you can, boys. Okay, okay, Wolf. Don't have to tell me twice. Stanhope stops juggling and actually starts eating his rolls now very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> How does he do it? <laughs> what, eat? This guy's incredible. <laughs> He juggles and then he eats it. It's like he's just changing matter within you his hands. You guys are too kind. Yeah. Take my knife. <laughs> Stop trying to give me your knife. Okay. <laughs> Being very pushy. 
Then you see Kestian return, pointing into the tent, and you hear him say, Waltz. And whipping around the corner is Lieutenant Lionel Werewig. You know him to be the son of a lord. He has a very high status. He has blonde hair. He has it loosely flowing down to his shoulders. He has a chiseled chin, high cheekbones, glowing blue eyes, it would seem, just radiant skin, and his arms are behind his back, and he is towering over the soldiers with immaculate posture, and everyone drops their food. Plates clank, silverware clanks. Um, Silence falls over the tent. And Lieutenant Lionel Werewig steps in and starts to walk around the table with a very precise motions, taking account of everyone who's in the tent, looking at everything that's on the table. And he stops before you, Waltz, and says, Waltz, is it? Oh, yeah, Lieutenant Lionel Werewig. Good to see you. Hey, I wanted to thank you for all this food. Hmm. I don't think this food was for this tent waltz oh really that's uh odd because we just won a really big battle i thought uh this was a thank you from you guys to us for doing a really uh good job in that fight i mean is that not what this is is uh no in fact what this is is a subordinate stealing from his superiors breaking multiple military laws a criminal might you say criminal subordination uh well, I mean, listen, the way I look at it is uh, we're the ones fighting the battles here, you know? And if you want us to continue winning battles for you, I figured you would want us well fed so that we can continue fighting hard for you. I mean, shoot, if uh, we keep winning, you guys get to keep your uh, fancy stainless armor there. <laughs> the way you look at it, a low-born butcher, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and why I mean, would I, I care know. about the way you look at the way our military should be run? What do you know of anything, really, besides cutting meats? I just think it'd be a, a good idea if you keep us uh, fed, you know. You guys kind of sit up there on your on your horses and everything, and I'm sure you're very busy with all the stuff in your fancy tents with all your fancy meats. But, uh, you know, I'm sure feeding these guys who work really hard for it... Uh, is is the least you can do. Am I right there, Lieutenant Werewig? You see a couple people smirk amidst the crowd and instantly hide their snickers, and Lieutenant Werewig certainly takes note of that, looks at you, you see some redness grow in his cheeks, and then he punches you swiftly in the gut. Ooh. No, sorry, uh, you just caught me a little off guard there, uh, seeing as how I know you're somewhat of a pacifist, uh, which, you know, I think we... <laughs> All can tell from the past few battles that you've kind of stayed out of. You see Stan open the crowd. His eyes are bulging like, and you see him grit through his teeth. Walt, don't. And then Lieutenant Werewig punches you across the face this time. Daz will stand up too. <sighs> hey, listen, Lieutenant Werewig, maybe you saved some of that might for the battle. I've won more battles than you've even been in, Waltz, and I'm afraid... You have fought your last, and he socks you across the face one last time. Your vision grows hazy as you fall to one knee, and the last thing you hear is Werewig say, take him to the chopping block, and you curl over. Vision goes black. So cut to some moments later. Waltz, you feel your knees being drug on the ground. Your arms hurt, your head is pounding, you look over and with hazy vision and see two soldiers, one on each arm, dragging you through the dirt and walking alongside you with a very smug look on his face is Lieutenant Werewig and Kestian. Your outstanding wit seems to have gotten you in a predicament, Waltz. One I'm afraid you won't be getting out of with any smooth talking. Uh, yeah, sometimes that happens. Hey, Kestian, you hit me, uh, you hit me a few good times back there in the tent. No, no I didn't, Lieutenant Where And then Lieutenant Werewig looks at him like, 
obviously he's making fun of you and he goes, shut up, Waltz. You're finally going to get what's coming to you. You think you're better than everyone around here. No, I wouldn't say that. I just thought we deserved a nice little meal after a hard fought battle. Well, I hope you enjoyed your last meal, Waltz. Suppose it could have been worse. I doubt that. And with that, your drug up to a stump. You're thrown over it. The two soldiers grab your arms and bind them behind your back. They bind your legs and they force your head down on the stump. And you look over with your head cranked up against the stump and see an executioner walking out with a dark mask on, cutouts only for their eyes, holding a heavy axe lumbering towards you. Oh no, my uh, my dad's going to be pretty upset here. Uh. <laughs> we'll be sure to notify the butcher that his boy was not fit for service. Oh, all right. So walking up, you notice the executioner is surprisingly frail, doesn't look too strong, pretty thin, comes up and stops before Lieutenant Werewig, and he says, This one here is a thief. He has been sentenced to death. I trust you know what to do in a smug, arrogant way. And the executioner nods. And you see Lieutenant Werewig wrap around with Kessian, clearly getting a good position to watch you waltz. And Lieutenant Werewig says, Any last words, butcher's boy? Once again, too afraid to use your own blade, huh? He goes to grab the hilt of his sword with rage, and just then you hear, Lieutenant! Lieutenant! And he whips his head around, and a bunch of soldiers are running up, and they say, The orcs! The goblins! They've launched a counterattack! They're, they're marching on the camp right now! And he grows wide-eyed, looks to Kestian, and says, Ready my horse! And he looks to the executioner, and he says, Finish the job! And he whips around his cape, billows in the wind, and he starts sprinting back to camp. And in the distance, you can hear commotion, screams coming from camp. Literally, some sort of chaos is going on. And they make haste back towards camp. And the executioner says, I'm sorry, orders are orders. And he starts to pick up the axe and laboriously puts it on his shoulder. Yeah, who, who, who is that over there? Mm. None of your concern. That's what the mask is for. Hey, uh, it's... Don't, don't I know you? You sound, uh, pretty familiar. It's, it's me, Waltz. Eld, from, uh, Billerod. Uh, Eld? Uh, oh. The axe drops down into the dirt. Uh, boy, uh, it's me. He, he pulls the hood off, and you see Telenor, the older man six months ago that you gave food to. And your father mentioned was looking to join the military for some sort of pay and to get out of Billerod. A uh, lad, no. oh, what have you done to get yourself in this situation? Your father, no. Talonor, hey, I, you know, I thought that was you. Hey, yeah, no, listen, I uh, got myself in quite the predicament here. Uh, officers were having a nice feast. I took some of the food, gave it to the guys. He didn't like it. I completely didn't provoke him in any other manner, and he just kind of oh, got Eld, angry at me. You've always been oh, so yeah. giving. Oh, no. Oh. Well, hey, will you just make sure uh, my dad, uh, you know, gets uh, any money that I've saved up and uh, my income goes to him? Oh, Held. Uh, he rubs his forehead. You can tell he's very troubled by this. Uh, I can't do this. Hey, well, listen, if uh, if you don't want to do this, I'm not going to I'm not gonna beg you, you know. I mean, that's a pretty... It's a pretty heavy axe there, and honestly, if you didn't, you know, completely sever my head from my body, I'd pretty be pretty appreciative of that. Uh, and I, I mean, listen, I wouldn't say a thing to anybody, and we could just go our separate ways. <sighs> he knows I'm supposed to. If he finds out I didn't follow through, uh... hmm. he pulls out a little dagger and cuts your bindings and allows you to stand up. Hey, listen, Telenor, uh, thank you. Oh, well, that's the least I could do. Your whole family, all they've ever done is look out for us. We all got through the fade together. Listen, um, I hate to ask this, but would you do me a f another favor? Again, I will be in your debt, of course, but... Hey, if you, uh, if you let me live here, you will never in, in your life be in debt to, uh, to us. Not that you ever were before, but thank you. Right, well, see... 
I must do something to ensure you will never be seen around Eisenhelm, Billerod, uh, any of these places again. If, if I'm caught having let you live, uh, they won't simply chop my head off. It'll be much worse. Oh yeah, hey listen, whatever you gotta do to give yourself peace of mind and I'll get out of your hair, I won't come back to Eisenhelm ever. Right. He, he turns around and you see him go to a fire that's burning in the distance. He grabs an iron rod and sticks it into the flame. And he looks back at you nervously, looks back to the flame, pulls it out, and you see the Eisenhelm sigil, the primary kingdom overseeing this alliance. And it is a helmet, as Eisenhelm means iron fortress, and it's glowing red hot. And he says, I must brand you a criminal lad. I'm, I'm sorry. It's the only way to ensure you'll never return. Oh, yeah, that's gonna... That's gonna hurt. I'm afraid so. You understand, don't you? All right, listen, I understand. Let's get it over with. Right. Unfortunately, it goes on the neck. Hey, let's just hurry this up on three, all right? Yes. Sorry again. All right, no problem. Are you ready? Yes. One. All right. Two, one, two, three. Uh, three. And it ah! sizzles and burns on your neck, and he pulls it off and says, oh, Sorry. I'm sorry, Walt. And he gives you a hug. I'll give him a hug and just kind of um, really, really uh, kind of watch out for the burn that I now have, maybe kind of wincing as, as uh, you know, I kind of extend my arms and, and move my neck slightly. Listen, lad, um, there's a node east of here. Uh, we have yet to claim it. Uh, it's dangerous, but at least you won't run into any soldiers there. I've heard it's set to align within three days. Perhaps you could make it. Uh, get off world. To safety. Three days, you say? Uh, yeah, I think I could do that. Uh, that's a good idea, Telenor. Uh, hey, thank you. I'll, uh, I'll start heading that way. Right. I'll see if I can get word to your father. I'm so sorry. I appreciate that. Uh, if you can, when you get back home, tell him I'm okay. Uh, will do, lad. I, I only hope it's true. <laughs> Best of luck out there. And he pats Thanks. you on the shoulder. And I'll kind of wince. Listen, a... Watch, uh, watch out, you know, this, this wound is still pretty fresh. The whole brand that you gave me <laughs> a couple of seconds ago. That was moments ago. ago, yes, sorry. Yeah, it was, still hurts pretty bad. Uh, but all right, I'll head that way right now. Thanks again, Telenor, I'll see ya. Yes, best of luck, Eld. I'll give him one final nod before I run off. So you make your way down into the wilderness, kind of get off the path and try and find a way to wrap around. But you stop for a moment and you look back towards camp and see the glow of flames illuminating from the tents, the palisade walls. You hear lots of screaming, the clanking of weapons. It sounds very intense. But you know in the other direction is the node that will surely lead you to safety. If only you can navigate the marshes and avoid detection from the Desalonians. I'll, uh, I'll look both ways and maybe take a step towards the node and quickly turn around and look at all the fighting and sprint back to the uh, all the commotion. So you run through the wilderness, cutting through. You arrive on the edge of camp, on the tree line. You see a busted down wall, and you're able to peer into camp. Can you roll me a perception check? Yes. Nine. So you're trying to see if you see any of your friends, see what's going on, but you just see complete chaos. Hobgoblins, goblins, orcs everywhere just tearing through camp. You can't make out anyone in particular, but what absolutely dominates your attention is there are multiple red drakes flying through the sky, raining fire down on the camp, absolutely incinerating multiple soldiers at a time. And on top of these drakes are hobgoblins and orcs, goblins commanding their every movement. Oh no, this... This isn't good. This isn't good at all. And I'll immediately look to see if I can find anybody that may be in danger, any way to help anybody. Absolutely. So you cross the palisade wall, maybe sticking towards the edge to try and blend in somewhat. Can you roll me another perception check? Absolutely, I can, Zach. 16. Perfect. You look around, you see your friends off in the distance, 
Dilly, Das, and Stanhope fighting amidst the crowd, fending off hobgoblins. They're sticking together, doing their best. And you look to your right and you see Kestian locked in combat with a goblin. He's clanking swords with him. He clearly looks nervous, out of sorts. And then the goblin leaps in the air and stabs him up in the trap and clearly gets deep into his body and pulls it out and blood shoots out. And you see Kestian stumble back, plop down on the ground. You see the goblin stand over him and chuckle. <laughs> and turn back to the battlefield and run deeper into camp. Once it, once it leaves, I'll sprint over to Kestian and uh, rip a piece of maybe my tunic off um, or just find any cloth that I can and just press it and apply as much pressure to that wound as I can. Say, hey, Kestian, uh, keep quiet. Uh, I think we can get you out of this. This doesn't look too bad. Just stay calm, all right? Roll me a medicine check. Okay. So Kestian's eyes are growing wide. You can tell he's very scared, but then you can also see in his expression, like, you're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to be dead. You can tell you're the last person he expected to see. 19. Awesome. You are suppressing the blood that is shooting out of his neck, but you can still tell that he is extremely pale, lost a ton of blood, and he is surely about to die. I'll just uh, panic and maybe start like stuffing the wound and trying to stop the bleeding as much as I can and just press my hands into that spot as much as possible. Can you roll me a religion check? Oh yeah. 21. Excellent. So you can tell he's clearly about to die and you know there's nothing you can do here to save him, but you refuse to give up. You, at the very least, want to be there in his final moments, despite all that Kestian's done to you. Even though you were never friends, you never looked out for anyone within the battalion or anything like that. You just want him to be with a friend when he dies, and you're giving him assuring words, and suddenly you feel something start to churn within you, something you've never felt before, something completely foreign. This power energy surge through you, your hand starts to glow where you're applying pressure on his neck and suddenly you see a lot of the cuts around him start to diminish and you can feel the pressure has been diminished and you see color return to his face focus return to his eyes and he looks very present suddenly and he says "Uh, how are you doing this Uh." i'll uh just look down really shocked and my eyes will get really wide and I won't really know exactly what I'm doing, but just continue trying to hold on to that feeling because obviously whatever I'm doing is working. You realize that you have healed him with some sort of foreign magical energy. You don't know how you conjured it. You don't know what you did. You don't even know if you can replicate it. You don't even know how to explain it, but you have healed his wound and saved his life. Kestian uh, stands up. What? Are you okay? Wizard, you're a butcher's boy. Yeah, I, uh, listen, I don't know what just happened there. Uh, you, you feeling okay? Yeah, I, I don't know how you did it, but I, yeah, I'm doing fine. Thank you. Hey, no problem. Looks like, uh, the main group is retreating. You should probably try and catch up with them and get out of here. It doesn't look like, uh, this battle's going too well and you'll end up in the same spot if you don't get out of here quick. He looks like he's about to say something to you changes his mind, gives you a nod, and runs off back into the battle. I'll go um, back to where I was, where I kind of had a good view of the battlefield, and I'll look for Philly, Stanhope, and Das. Great. Roll me a perception check. I will. Nat one. Oof. Not awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's you, like the second nat one tonight. You turn and look back to the exact spot you knew your friends to be. You see Doss and Philly fighting off orcs. You don't see Stanhope, which is concerning to you, but you see Doss and Philly get the better of a swarm of goblins and hobgoblins. They cut down a charge, slicing through three or four attacking goblins, and they say, Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Pemdaz will look down at his sword, and I'll say, I know it wasn't that bread that gave me courage. And he'll look up to the sky. But Waltz, you give me courage. Nice. <laughs> and all, all, 
Waltz. And all Waltz see is just them talking. Like, you can't quite hear them. They're, like, too far away. <laughs> and then, Waltz, your eyes grow wide as you see behind them a drake coming straight at them. Das, Philly, look out! And then the drake lets out a stream of white-hot flame that just incinerates Das and Philly as they... Ah! I don't want to die. Do it. I'm here. Hold my hand. Uh, uh, reach out and grab Philly's hand. You are the bravest of all of us. Philly, I love you. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> I wish Fultz was here. I wish, I wish he were too. I guess it wasn't white hot. It was pretty hot. And after 30 <laughs> seconds of you communicating <laughs> with each other in the flames... <laughs> they are incinerated. I'll just uh, immediately be taken back, drop to my knees, and hammer the ground with my fists and just burst out into tears. And then this drake circles around and starts veering towards your vicinity, Waltz, coming in for a charge. What do you do? I'll just look for anything around me that I can use as a weapon. Um, I guess I'll look for a spear again, something that I can throw, or a bow and arrow, or something that I can shoot. Great. Roll a perception check. 13. So you're scanning frantically, trying to find some sort of weapon, and then your eyes are drawn towards the node on the edge of camp. But even more so, your father, Marlo, is standing on the node, and beckoning you towards him. I'll, I'll look surprised for a second, but not question it and just start sprinting towards him. So this drake is swooping down low, coming behind you. You peer over your shoulder and see its chest starting to glow with an orange aura as it's clearly charging up its breath weapon to attack you. You look towards the node. Your father continues to beckon you, and the node starts to glow with a vibrant blue aura, and he reaches his hand out towards you. I'll reach out to grab it. You go to grab it, and he instantly fades as you step on the node, and you fall to a knee, confused, turn around, see the drake's mouth open, unleash a stream of flame barreling towards you, and then, in an instant, dazzling blue lights erupt upward from the node, and you feel an intense jolt rip you from your present location. You feel like you traveled trillions of miles in an instant. Your mind is suddenly flooded with a distinct image of a circular stone doorway bearing a sigil of an encircled star. And ringing within your mind, you hear a chorus of several voices say, Tredesis. And suddenly, before you is an entirely new location. You are not in the center of camp. No flames are around you. You see nobody that you know. You're in a sunny, quaint forest. You hear birds chirping. The temperature is warm, but there is a nice, cool breeze rolling through the air. And you look down and you're standing on a node and it has a faint blue glow on the runes and etchings that trace around it that subtly retract and then disappear entirely. I'll look around, um, take it all in, step off the node, immediately look down and look real distraught as I kind of remember um, my friends, Philly and Doss, and I'll just think to myself that... Uh, I'll always remember them and I'll make sure to continue to live on and do anything I can in their memory to uh, to honor them. I'll take a, a final breath maybe to calm my nerves and try and come back to reality and relax a little bit. Maybe just enjoy the peace and the calmness, not even really like thinking how I got here or anything, but more just being thankful that I'm in an area that's safe now. And... I'll just look around and see if I can find any direction on where there may be a road or something like that. 
Yeah. So you wander this wilderness for a couple days. You do your best to find food, um, perhaps trapping a rabbit or two, seeing if there's any vegetation you can find and eat. Try and wash yourself at a stream, doing your best to find a road. And eventually, you do find a path. I'll step onto it and see if I can find anybody coming. I'll just kind of pick a direction and start walking and listen out for anybody else, you know, traveling on that road. You walk this road for a couple hours, just pondering, wondering where you are, what's happened to the remainder of your friends, Stanhope, the camp. Wonder if you'll ever go home again. Wondering if there's anything you could have done differently, but then you're snapped from your thoughts as you hear the sound of a wagon approaching. I'll uh, stick out my thumb and try and wave the wagon down. The wagon slows to a stop. You turn your head and see an older looking halfling with a big straw hat and green overalls with no shirt underneath. Sitting next to him is a kobold with burnt orange skin and you hear hello there strapping lad you look like you could carry some apples <laughs> and that is where we'll Aww. end our <laughs> origin session yeah why did that fill me with so much joy it was truly Your beautiful Dixie's voice <laughs> i love my turn I love my turn. Awesome. Awesome. All right. But everybody <laughs> shut up because we're going to talk about that <laughs> origin right. session in the downtime because that was fun. That was okay. totally unique. That was different. Thank you guys for playing NPCs. Super fun. If you didn't know, oh, the yeah, downtime is for patrons where we react to each episode, break it down. We're going to talk about what it was like for them to play NPCs, just kind of break down all that origin goodness. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much for joining us. You should check us out on Reddit, Instagram, Patreon, YouTube. Um, yeah, all that stuff. Thank you for sticking with us. I just want to thank Joel for all of his awesome editing. He cuts out all of our mistakes. And trust me, there are plenty of them because we are not perfect. Did you Idiots. know that? Did anyone know that? We're not perfect. And uh, I would like to thank Taryn for his editing as well because he puts in all that ambience, that sound effects. He takes... Ryan's music finds great places to insert it. He puts all of that to enhance your theater of the mind experience. And I would like to thank Adam for all of his awesome artwork. It is truly incredible. Seriously, you should check us out on Patreon because once a week, Adam does a sketch that depicts a moment from the session that patrons get a vote on, and it is top tier, high quality stuff. Seriously, check it out. Adam is incredible. And thank you, Ryan, for your incredible music man you have been going so hard seriously like i'm blown away like you're getting new equipment you're getting all these new programs ryan is like never satisfied he's like i want this to be even more immersive and this dude will not slow down we can't stop him we've tried we're like ryan stop making original tracks every 10 dude, seconds you're gonna hurt like, yourself. that's all i do <laughs> that's what i do so thank you so much guys this is like seriously best group project i've ever been in so much fun and thank you, listener, because you're what makes this a show instead of five guys recording themselves and posting it online for no reason. So, yeah, thank you so much. And we'll see you next time, mortals. Philly, I got uh, you got those cherries for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I forgot who I was for a second. I was like, oh, that's me. <laughs> you sounded like Mario. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a goal. It's a me. <laughs> Joel, Joel's like not here. So when he goes to edit this, he's going to be like, what the heck? <laughs> Take your time.